the hounds are a hungered. Back to Ivor and friends. It is a bit of a shame that they never introduced any other main characters that we would follow through the second and third game. It's always been Rook. I mean, I guess Bolverk was the main character for number two. But I expected more. Look out, you bark. Bulwark has been gaining ground on the caravan since fleeing Strand. But now he's at a full-on sprint. His axis flies towards Ivan's head, clanging off Bulka's shield at the last moment. Static crackles. Bolts of lightning rip into the ground, tossing clouds of such fire into the air that it clears to reveal no body. You can feel Bulwark watching malevolently from afar. Then his warped army turns, disappearing behind a hill. He's got an army? At least he seems to remember the sting. Ivan huffs. Bulka shakes her head. Picking up the engraved axe Bulwark threw. This is a prized possession, made from his own horn. The only reason he'd throw it is because he thought he could end, his, end this right here and now. He hangs the axe on her belt and stares out into the darkness. I'm more worried about a Bulwark. I can't see more... I can't see the one I... What? <laughs> I'm more worried about a Bulwark I can't see than the one I can. We've got no supplies, I've noticed. There's no, there's no option for supplies. Some of us still need to sleep, Volker blurts, eyeing Juno. You haven't rested since leaving Strand. If I know Bulwark, that's what he's waiting for. He's going to tire us out before bringing us down the other axe. Juno replies, I can't sense the warped approaching. We will rest little and lightly. The ravens chafe at being told what to do. Volker is clearly preparing to say something. Let him make the call. Count on an attack tonight, Volker says. You seek out a rocky outcropping that covers as much as your back as possible. Everyone but the lookout sleep now, she says, so we're rested when it comes. As Volker expected, the warped calm. Bulwark is nowhere in sight, but you can't shake the feeling he's watching. Oh, so we don't get to rest? It's a straight fight? Late. I was hoping to upgrade some of our team. I haven't got any level 9s, have I? No, so I can't use that one item. The Wayrite's Amulet. Alright, no worries. Uh, I guess we'll just pick the team that it's given us, because everyone's the same rank. Oh no, Valgard is... Okay, sorry. Valgard's level rank 9. There you go. Uh, yeah, let's just, let's just start. Let's change the order, though. Either. Uh, there. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about having two menders in the fight, but I guess we'll see how it goes. It's a big team. Ambush! Is anyone here surprised? Okay. Hmm. Not the scariest looking gang, but our gang is also not very scary either. I guess the only thing we can do is just squash them all down to one side of the map. So at least we're together then. Um, morale's good, so we get extra willpower. I don't think I want to move. Oh yeah, we get lightning attacks with this team. I don't want to waste those like I always seem to. They're not even close enough for Ivan to do his lightning yet. Oh wow. Confuse and weaved energy. I was thinking of Zephyr. Was it Zephyr? I, someone could lay runes on the floor. That would make us stronger. I mean, I can confuse this guy, but what, all he'll do is run away, which we don't really want. We want to keep him close. Do a normal attack. Ah! 
Um, yeah, we don't need to get too close here. Let's just finish this guy off. Okay, that was just a range attack. We're good. Yeah, let's do that. I mean, he's he just had a turn, so his turn's gonna be last anyway. So maybe I messed that up. This could be a big opportunity for Ivan. I don't think I've got close enough here. I have just about. Love to be able to confuse. Um, yeah. So if I move here, my confuse should reach this guy. Ooh, I was taking some punishment. I'd lose one willpower if I walk through that, but honestly. <laughs> Polka kind of sucks. Um, yep, yeah, two, three. Already ruined that guy's shield. Okay, if Falcon moves, she'll take bleed damage. One, two, three. We'll take three. Now, I feel like maybe we should do the move that buffs people's strength. Do it to either. <laughs> Big absorbing of the damage. This is a shame. It only hurt two people. Oh, sorry. I could hurt. Wait. Did I hit three or four there? Okay. Oh, it's still not Ivor's turn. Awesome. That's really good. We don't want you to move, actually, I just realised. So let's do... Let's do that shield smash. Okay, Ivor's still safe. Now with his strength buff, only 9 damage is kind of sad. 4 and 5. I guess we go here. Let me do a Tempest. That was awful. Should have done a normal attack. This is not good. We're going to start dropping like flies. Um, so his turn's next and he can't reach anyone because he's so big. It's his turn. He can't reach anyone to kill them. Then it's his turn. 
and he can kill. So you all get pushed back. Oh, completely forgot Ivan was there. Okay. Put him in harm's way for one last strike. You know what? I just realised we've had the uh, press triangle to do electric damage. Completely forgot. Completely forgot. There's only one person too confused here, right? This big strong man. I'm not entirely sure how we do this. Um... Now I could push the other guy's turn back, but what is the point? I mean, might as well just use them all. This is actually this is actually good because now they moved close to each other. We've got four turns. We've got four turns until or three turns, sorry, until more of these guys show up. Why would he do armor damage? Oh, Juno's got to move that. Oh wow. I am so confused, so she died. But she's got a ghost here now. Here we go, I guess. Well, we've lost this fight. Really? That many more people you're going to get involved? I haven't even got any willpower. Oh. When Juno falls in battle, she isn't incapacitated. Instead, she becomes a ghost, invisible and invulnerable to enemies. As a ghost, Juno cannot attack or use abilities, but she can move and she can collect the fonts of dark energy that are visible on her turn. Each font that she collects restores both strength and willpower. When trying to maximize Juno's funk collection each turn, remember you can press... Okay. At any point you can restore Juno to life with the strength and willpower she has currently by stepping into her body. Oh, wow. Well, that's wacky. I mean, there's nothing I can do. How do we... I don't want a quick game.
I think I've gained all the max health I can. Yeah. That's a fun little mechanic for Juno. Ha, ah, you fools! I was I was here the whole time. With my awful health. And my inability to do anything. Okay. Does it work? Oh, never mind. Did I say, does it work twice in a fight? Can't do anything. I can't do anything! <laughs> oh my god, kill me! Kill me! Do it! I'm right here, kill me! End me. Oh my god. Wait. She's turning into a ghost, that's why, but... It's still game over, no? There we go, okay. Now, the scary thing about this fight is usually when I lose a fight, I'll retry the fight with my strongest team. But everyone's the same rank. Oh, we can carry on, okay. Volker called it when the warp came, they came hard. There's no doubt anyone anymore that Bulwark has some kind of command over them. You came too, not sure how anyone survived that battle. Juno remains where you saw her last, as if nothing has happened. Volker pulls herself onto her feet and comes stomp stomping at you, dragging her shield heavily behind her. She doesn't look happy. Let's get something straight, Juno. You drag us out here as captives, and now Bulwark's trying to hunt us down and kill us. Do you see how messed up this is? And back there you try and give my give my ravens orders? Tell me again when we're allowed to rest. Go on, say it to my face. Everyone calm down. What would you have me do, Falker? Oh no, don't you dare pretend to be the reasonable one right now. Steam plumes from Falker's nostrils as an angry yox. Like an angry yox, swirling through the cold air. I didn't want to hear your voice. The ravens are under my command, and if you want anyone watching your back instead of putting a knife... What if I ever spoke on my behalf? You know what? That sounds like a great idea. Wait, how did I get dragged into this? Behave like a lap dog or get treated like one. Ooh. Okay, so... The guard stone ahead shimmers. It seems to hold some sway over the darkness somehow. Or maybe the darkness itself finds them distasteful. Oh, there's a team of people here. I wonder if we're going to recognise them. Surely we will recognise them, right? This whole episode is going to be about seeing the people from the past series, I reckon. A golden glow greets you, the first warmth you've felt since entering the darkness. Dishevelled women and children huddled on one side of the godstone, while Dredge sits on the other. While a Dredge sits on the other, the Dredge has arranged a circle of obsidian stones around itself, and just outside that lie a bot. Oh! So the Dredge and the humans are all trying to cower using the godstone. They're trying to hide from the darkness. Ain't this a sight? Ollie grins, then he frowns. I have a feeling about this is about to become our problem. Oh, no, I do not recognize this person. Praise the gods, someone has finally come, carrying a divine light. Not exactly. The matronly woman. The matronly woman? Faces... The, woman, the matronly woman's face falls as she gets a better look at you. I know that crest. Ravens. Did you come all this way to rob us then? First we're stuck here with that slag. The stone hurler stands within the ring of stones, warbling loudly as you approach the godstone. The old woman recoils in disgust. Well, how interesting. This one is terrified of you, Ivor. I mean, we know why. They have a language. When they're not twisted into abominations, she called you Destroyer. I'd heard of the Destroyer before, but I had no idea I was travelling with him. Is it really you? They speak of you like we do, Bellower. Wow. Thought you'd be bigger. It's a misunderstanding. Where would you hear such a thing? Travelling with the Volker. But you do not know where we are headed. You're an interesting one, Iper. We should talk more. The old woman rejoins you again. After a heated battle of whispers with her kin, she clears her throat. 
I am called Hilda. We came here to pray when the sky is darkened. I guess I don't need to tell you why we're only alive now because of this godstone. A miracle. And they say the gods are dead. Then this slag comes out of nowhere. It attacks us. Killed their husbands and mine as well. Aye, a right miserable so sucker he was. But an injustice to be killed by this thing. She gestures rudely at the stone hurler. And makes a hissing sound like escaping steam. Quiet, filthy thing. You'll take us somewhere safe. Surely. Surely you will. The opposite. You don't want to know where we're going. God's alive. Has everyone lost their minds? At least give us justice. Don't leave this slag alive to kill us and eat our children. They don't eat children, and this isn't our problem. Oh, wait, Alfred, what's the dredges side of the story? Hilda bristles at the implication. Alfred taps her spear, and the horns vibrate with a faint hum. The dredge sings a soft response. She says they left her no choice but to defend herself. Stuck here, same as them. By the gods, we found the only slag lovers in this dying world. She snatches something shiny from the hands of one of her kin, waving it in front of you. This is what the ravens need, isn't it? You disgusting vultures. Family heirloom. Worth more than it looks. I say we just bring the stone hurler along with us, Iber. She can obviously fight. You said it was terrified of me. Then she won't put up much of a struggle, will she? What are you talking about? Kill it already! Kill it! Um... Convince the stone hurler to come along, Alfred. Alfred speaks to the dredger again. It shows little emotion, but that may just be because it lacks facial expression. Quite the motley crew you've got, the destroyer. Don't call me that, I'm serious. Hilda pockets her heirloom, offering only low curses, angry that the dredge lives on. Ooh, more renown. Ah, oh, I'll rest! Ah! Oh, no! It's been so long. It's been 84 years. Okay, so... Three days of resting is what we need. So, one, two, two, and three, and three. And we will talk to these guys in a second, but first, let's do some upgrading. We've got so oh my god, oh, the castaway! A dredge hurler. Of all the dredge that we got on our team, we got a stone thrower, which, you know... Doesn't fill me with confidence, but hey-ho. We should have enough renown here to rank up all of our rank 8s, so let's just go through them all. Eight points available. Jesus. Nice. Either. Six points available. Um, cool. Ollie, Ollie, Ollie. Eight points available. Sure. Spa can't rank up, but he has got six points available, so. Ivind can't rank up, but he has stats to give. Oops. Juno, I get 18 points. Oh my word. Um, well, she's already she already kind of defies death, so I don't need to give her that. Let's give her regen armor. He can be promoted, but we'll we'll do all the rank eights first. So many of these guys can't rank up because they haven't killed enough. My death skill. It just seems too good. Val God can get promoted, but again, start with everyone else. Cool. Uh, Bursi. Cool. 
cool. Krumer. Hey. God, they're going to be so much stronger now. Alfron. What's the other one? Oh, ill. Either avoid any killing blow. Or regain willpower every turn. Like, one of those skills seems a lot better than the other. You know what? Completely forgot we had back in the team. Eight points. Okay, we've still got quite a lot of renown, so let's go through our rank nines now. Nice. Uh, Ollie, you know. Oh, I need to make a choice, I think. Yeah. Valgard or Krumer? Obviously, it's going to be Krumer. Nice. Cool. Okay, I feel a lot more reassured. Let's speak to Alfred. Alfred finds a quiet moment to make her way over to you, leaning on her staff. Why didn't you tell me, Val? Tell you what? About being the destroyer. It isn't something that comes up often in conversation. You'll have to excuse me. I don't always know how to speak to pe with people. I spend a lot of time alone. or with the sculptors. Sculptors? Well, more precisely, they say something like, We who shaped the stone. But it's close enough. You didn't think the dredge called themselves dredge, did you? There's quite a lot I've learned from. Oh, wow. So they're called the sculptors. Yeah. Some things you may know. Many secret. Open or I'll your reply. These sculptors see you as a friend? You wanted to stop looking at everything as us and them. Some of them are friends, others are not. The same as any people, anywhere. Oh, I understand how hard it can be to see past your differences. Impossible sometimes. But see, many don't even try. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, what kind of secrets are you talking about? What, for nothing? I'm nothing if not a trader of knowledge, you know. The, sec the rarest secrets don't come cheap. How about this? In exchange for telling me how you became the destroyer, I'll tell you something you may find quite important. Alright, sure. Keep it to yourself. I do. The Sunder I killed, Rays. It was no legendary battle. When I brought her head back to the other Val, they invented their own stories. The truth is I got separated from my allies and found her in a snowstorm, alone. She was cradling an infant. My axe and ac what? <laughs> my axe accidentally killed the child. What do you mean? Accidentally killed the child. How does that happen? Indeed. It was Bellower's child, Ivor. How can you... Are you certain? Completely. Consider that our trade. There is more to tell. At another time, maybe. Wow. We should be... Yeah, let's, yeah, let's get out of here. Just one more thing. Are those Val horns on your staff? Alfred laughs with a genuine mirth. Nothing to worry about, Ivor. They were a gift uh, that I treasure very much. You see, I have friends of all sorts. But as you said, we should be going. Another story for another time, perhaps. Wow. Alright, Falker, your turn. You notice Falker standing alone, arms crossed, sporting a deadly scowl. Everything alright? Yeah, we're doing great. Our leader is hunting us down, we've been kidnapped by witches, and now we're arguing about how many dredge we can save along the way. It's the kind of thing a little girl grows up dreaming about. I get your point. She glares at you through your narrow eyes. Through her narrow eyes. You still care about Bulwark? You trying to piss me off? Imagine little Elette hunting you through the darkness, trying to rip your throat out. Now imagine some arse accuses you of having feelings about it. You notice Volker's hand instinctively goes to the axe Bulwark had thrown at Ivind a few days back. What do you plan to do with that axe? Its name is Claw. And what I plan to do with it is my business. Can we agree to keep it tucked away? If the sight of it scares you, then yes, I'll keep it safe and snug right here. I'm not suicidal, either. I'm not going to plant it in a Valk's skull. Not right now. She glares at you through narrow eyes. 
Um, nah, that'll do. Let's go. I get why you came over now. Juno's ready to go. No, I came on my own. You know, I used to be great at telling when someone is lying, but sure is harder these days, isn't it? You know what I mean? Let's get something straight. I'll take talking to you over Juno, but you're no raven. Whatever happened to Bulwark, I'm not convinced that he doesn't have a good reason for what he's doing. So don't give me a reason to let him. Don't try to get close and friendly. Alright, you made yourself clear. Good. Then we might get along. Now excuse me while I gather the unkindness. Unkindness? That's what they call a flock of ravens, either. An unkindness of ravens? <laughs> Fitting, don't you think? Is that true? A flock of ravens is called an unkindness? I don't know if that's true. Anyway, let's go. I know it's a murder of crows. Uh, I can see him. I can see the little stone singer in the middle of our little walking tree. Does it worry anyone else that they're somehow gotten ahead of us? Asked Valgard. What was once a hill has been twisted into a thin, sharp strip of land, pulled like spider silk with a steep drop underneath. Warp shambled back and forth across it. Bulwark is nowhere in sight. They don't need rest, Volker realises with a shudder. Volvert can't confront us directly. Not while the Volker live. It's going to thin the herd all the way to Ridgehorn. Fane, spits Ollie. It's exactly what we'd do, isn't it? I hate it. You'd consider an approach. Let's ask Volker. If it were us, we'd lure them across. Lay archers to hit them from the wings, or spears come to fill the retreat, says Volker. Something tells me the warp can't coordinate like ravens, though. But what would Volvok do with a bunch of drunk idiots? Volker mutters, and thinks for a while. It'd make it look like a trap, so we try to get fancy. So we try to get fancy. My gut says we just rush it. Okay. Let's go. Quick. Nobody stops until we're across, you bark. The ravens ad advance quickly. The warped are slow to respond. Slinger shouts Volker. Uh, noting warped dredge hiding over the ridge. Rush him! Okay, so... Hmm. We did technically lose our last fight. So is it really of my best interests to use the weakest again? No. But I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, Ira can summon a bear, so I want you near the front. And I think this is the order to go with. I still can't believe Bursi joined us. Bursi was like the bodyguard of Ludin. He joined us without saying a word. And no one even brought it up anymore. That could have gone worse. Okay, so I want big boy here. I want bear summoner there. Your bear can fight their bear. Invisible man. Uh, there. Spa. Get behind him. And vendors at the back rank. Oh, absorbers. What does track do? I've become invisible. It's the same thing as that Deutsch can do. Let's go. Say hello to my little bear. Attacks three targets, so we don't care about that. Let's just do a normal attack. Um. Oh, so the more willpower I do, the more armor damage I do when I hit someone. To a tale worth telling. 
Especially now that he's bleeding. We could make him do loads of damage on his next turn. Um, not thrilled about this, but we're going to get nice and close. Alright, you know what? The only way to hurt two people is by hurting Bercy as well. Where did those three... Oh yeah, those three are always there. Um, ideally, I would like to confuse that one at the back. Because he'll do the most damage. That was actually pretty good. He's definitely going to die next turn, but worth it. Yeah, I think we're going to go invisible as well. Percy! Might as well stay there. I don't really know how this works. It's only it looks like it's only gonna attack. Oh I see. So it's gonna attack the three spaces in front of me. And there doesn't seem to be a way. I can, I can spin around. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to be facing the bear. Pretty much choose who I want to kill here. Yeah, let's get rid of the bear, he's kind of in the way. <laughs> Gotta remember as well, I've got my lightning to spew at people. Okay, let's not do that again. <laughs> yeah, let's just kill this guy. Oh, this after never who lays in. by Dutch. It only makes sense really to confuse this guy. Oh, let's go. That should count as a kill for Juno, in my opinion. Four or three. Might as well get over here and do four. Fight alongside your bear. Makes more sense to insult this guy. Uh, 
probably a stupid move, but we're going to try it. Okay, yeah, we'll just do this. I wanted to try and get those two on the right, but I can't reach them. And I don't want to run through the thing that drained my willpower. Um... actually works out for us. This bear is taking a lot of aggro and I am all here for it. Giving me the ability to summon a bear. What a crazy random move it just threw at me. Hmm. No one's gonna die. So you know what? I think we're better off just attacking. No point in making anyone's turn get pushed back. Let's just get Ivan over here. those two and then get in with the big arc huge this guy here with a shield is the literal only threat left just to avoid any chance of death Oh, we'll go invisible. Oh, you know what? Completely forgot about that big guy in the middle. This bear has been, like, beyond huge for us. Big fan of this bear. I couldn't kill it by myself, so I have to do that first. Oh, 90% chance to hit. Oh, I can go through my allies when I'm invisible. Get out of here. You know what? Oh, we had two injuries, didn't we? Deitch and Bercy. Still, I think I'll take that. This time, the warp seems even more organised than the last. That could have gone all wrong, Spa says, peering over the bridge's edge at the twisted rocks far below. Volker replies, yeah, but we could all be dead. Come on, this isn't the place to give Volvark another try. I think, personally, we smashed it.
small, pale orbs wink at you from deep crags in the darkness. A brief inspection reveals that they're eggs. Skulkers, whispers Deitch, pulling one from the creature free from its shelf, stabbing through by his dagger. The stone herder who joins you with the godstone looks upset at the, by the dead thing. She darts between a few clusters, making scooping motions and nodding. Are you crazy, Falker frowns? There's a lot of eggs, Ollie bemoans, squinting ahead into the distance. It makes my faint skin crawl. He doesn't finish the sentence. I mean, I don't want to smash because the stone hurler looks upset that one's dead and she seems to want us to pick up more. So we'll allow the stone hurler to do whatever she sees wants to do. She finds a cluster of palm-sized eggs and begins gathering them in her sling, knowing as if to say, this is fine. You're not sure what is, you're not sure if it's more comforting or terrifying that she's unafraid, but nobody intervenes. Soon you leave the nest behind. Ew. I reckon we'll have a little, a little team of skulkers. Or no, I reckon the stone hurler will have an ability to summon skulkers. Or something like that. The caravan stops to rest their feet neat. The only good thing about this damned beacon we're walking around is that there's no reason to hide a campfire, says Krumer, chomping on some burnt meat. The conversation turns towards some of Krumer's war exploits and develops quickly into a rowdy debate about who could beat who in a fight. Alright, how about Daichin back, Prince Ollie? In a fair fight, asks Krumer. Back and his girlfriend, no question. Daich pouts and crosses his arms as everyone else laughs. But I'd put my golden falcon almost any of you spiny milkmaids, he smiles. Now in a fight against the Val, none of you have a chance. The ravens laugh. Well, who could hope to stand against an unkillable Krumer? The unkillable Krumer, quips Spar. Nobody yet, but I hope someday to face a... To face down a Sunder, says Krumer. Spar grins. What about a Sunder Slayer? There's a long silence. What do you think, Sunder Slayer? Krumer asks, putting you on the spot. Think you could take me? I wouldn't even need both arms. The others respond with delight. Now that's something I'd pay to see, Falcon says. But you know what I think? We need to get moving. The others grumble and roll their eyes, but soon you're back on the road. Nice. Good bit of light-hearted fun. Brambles rise ahead of you like gnarled hands reaching towards the sky, their fingers peppered with thorns. This was once a healthy forest, now just another obstacle. Through the branches lay a bare clearing here, another there, as if a fire had cleared half the forest before the darkness came. Bolvok knew we'd have little choice but to pass through here, Ivan says. Going around would cost days. Um... Volker, what's your good say this time? A tired head shake is telling. They'll use the trees so we can't tell the numbers or direction. They're not worried about losses. Once they start coming, I don't expect them to stop. Standing our ground is a sure way to be overrun. We should go now, before they're really dug in. She pauses for a moment, adding, This is gonna suck. We can't take a rest, we have to keep going. Shield, Holger calls in a tone you're starting to become familiar with. The ravens do their best, but progress is slow. Each fallen creature is replaced by two more. Eventually, you find yourself stopped and surrounded. Cut a swath. Swathe? Volker hops before we can push any further. Watch the flanks. So we do have some injuries. Get those guys out of here. And we can replace them with some rank 9s. Uh, we're going to go with... What does Alfred do again? <laughs> I'm not a massive fan. I want Mogan. My boy Mogan. Wait, can I rank people up here? I can. Well, I'll be... I won't, though. I'd rather gather the, uh... Gather the renown. Uh, let's go for... Yeah, Ollie. Ollie, Ollie, Ollie. I don't... Mm. Do I like having both of these guys out? Definitely not all three of these guys, but they're all... They're all rank 8. Oh, hello. Okay. Unable to make... It, okay, thank you. Mike the Mechanic, welcome to the stream. Uh, let's just go with this team. For a second I thought my stream ended because the game was telling me I'd lost connection. But no, we're still good. Alrighty. No Val. I, don't, I never have no Val in a fight. No end in sight to these things. Okay, um, let's see. 
I guess we just focus on... everyone on the left and work our way through them. See, we could attack for three, or we could do the flail. Four attacks at one strength or break each, plus one per adjacent ally on the last hit. Oh, okay. So the last hit will do more damage if I've got allies around me. So, six attacks, or do a normal attack for six damage. Yeah. Oh, he's absorbed it all. Flip. Um, I'm going to move him there and summon the bear there. Good. Ollie is an axe thrower. So let's go for the stone slinger. One damage. We, oh, okay, he's done the bleeding attack. Um, I don't think there's much point in me buffing anyone or slowing anyone down just yet. So we'll go for some we'll go for some break. Um So if I move here, I should be able to reach the big guy. But he won't hurt anyone else. I still think it's worth it. And moving one across means Juno will be able to reach that big guy. I'll take it. Hmm. I'm not going to kill him, but... Someone else will. We'll take that. The longer the bear can take aggro, the happier I'll be. Ollie, Ollie. Let's get back here and do the uh, axe storm. Can we get more than three? Two. Three. No. Hmm. Might be the right time to buff. Ollie. If he stays alive, his next attack will be pretty good. Now, this should be a great opportunity. So I can hit three of my allies if I if I choose that one. Very sad. I should have moved first. Take that. We will take that. Um, let's get back to a safer spot and confuse the bear. Awesome.
Actually, this should be a great a great time to shock people. And you know what? We'll just do it three times. Nice. Now I feel a little bit better about... You know what, let's just use two willpower. Okay, nice. Uh, let's go invisible. I want the bear to be as central as I can. Take all the aggro. Not as buffed as I thought I was going to be. Four damage to the bear though. Make it seven. I think I should be able to kill the spear man. Nice. Oh, okay. For a second, I just thought he had to take his own bear. Um. I don't think I need to give everyone, anyone armor yet. So let's keep with the electric attack. But let's move in a bit of a safer spot. Hey, I don't know what it is about this bear, but everyone loves attacking him. I am mean, I'm here for it. Oh, we attacked three people with that? That's awesome. 60%. We get it. Let's go for a, uh, a flail. Love that. Everyone loves attacking this bear, and I am. I couldn't be more here for it. This this bear summon might be my favourite move in the entire game. Oh, that's sad. Absolutely smash this. You know, I don't mind taking taking some willpower. This fight's over anyway. Now, do we take on the reinforcements? I think we do. I think we definitely do. Um, we gotta press X first, right? X to fight, and then we, yeah, okay. Uh, let's have a. Oh, I can't see anyone's health. Oh, that's annoying. Okay. Who do I know is struggling? Probably Mogan. Let's have a look at the Stone Singer for his first fight. Juno, you're out of willpower. So yeah, let's swap you out. Um, let's get Ivor in there, just for fun. And back. I'd rather keep... 
Irik. And I, I think everyone else is doing fine. Let's find out. Yeah, no, everyone's at full health. Not a fan of how it's always randomised where they start. Right, Kruma, you gotta go do your own thing this fight. Oh, I could fight this guy. Obviously I won't, but I could. Let me just double check here. I can't... Oh, the bear's only a one-time summon. Well, I've messed that up, haven't I? Okay. We can still use Irik. God, there's a lot of enemies, actually. I'm actually a bit nervous. Spaces up. Bit sad, I can only attack one, but we move. God, you know what? <laughs> Maybe this wasn't a good idea. Um... Oh, wait. What, what can we do here? So. Oh, okay. See? Barb stones. A stone egg hatches into a skulker if not destroyed. Sunstrike, does that mean I hurt myself? Strength damage and no exertion for extra movement. A bomb is thrown and exploded into a five tile area immediately. Okay. Let's go with... The uh, shatter stone. Get out of here. Uh, before I do this, really? God damn it! All right, we won't do it yet. They're not positioned right for the, uh, for the lightning strikes. Um, I could kill the bear, but there's not much point. Let's make the big guy bleed. Oh. I don't think I can... Fine, whatever. Hurt my friend. Feel a bit bad. Oh my god, what's he doing? Why would you go that way? You fool! Oh, I'm gonna do four damage against this guy, and I will. Could throw a bomb, but we're actually going to go with a skulker egg. Because even if it doesn't manage to hatch, it'll take their aggro. Oh, 
Bye-bye. Do lightning. No, I won't because that'll hurt my teammate. Or just hit him. Oh, my little, my little boy hatched. Oh, let's go. Really weak. It can skulk. What does it do? It becomes invisible and stalks a target. And howl. Skulker reappears. Oh, okay, so you do the skulk and then you howl. Reappears and attacks, signaling its pack mates to attack the same target. I mean, it could be a bit of a nuisance, but. Probably something that you want to do early in the fight. Oh, uh, yeah, no, we're going to fleet that. <laughs> no mass, no mass. Let's not push our luck. Fighting through a forest is irksome at best of times. Nearly intolerable in these conditions. You break through miles of razor-edged boughs, gasping to catch your breath in the open air. On the hills ahead rises Ridgehorn, finally. Now will reaching Ridgehorn be the end of the chapter? You see him? Says Volker. Volvok stands motionless far up the hill, clearly watching the folk caravan. Now I know how it feels for all those poor bastards who saw us coming. Hard to know what he's thinking at this point, says Ollie. Expect us to do what he'd do, or the opposite. We're expecting that we'd expect him to... Spar pipes up. Know what I'd do? Cook some food. Sleep. But he won't see that coming. Ollie scoffs. You're just tired of walking, old man. Volker blinks. Spar might be right. We'll make it look suspicious enough to throw him off, and everyone rests before Ridgehorn. No lookout, you ask, as they prepare the campfire? Volker shakes her head. That's what makes it look like it's a trick. But do whatever you like, I won't stop you. Wait, so having a lookout makes it look like it's a trick? We'll, we'll, we'll definitely camp, but I can't tell what they mean. I'll stay up and keep up. You sit still. Your back against the rock as the others quietly slumber. The quiet darkness begins to feel oppressive when time passes slowly. Soft crunching catches your attention. You swear under your breath, grabbing for your axe, but your hand finds empty air. In a panic, you jump up to your feet and scan the ground. No axe. The crunching gets louder. It turns into thumping. Tree branches abandoned, called bundles of snow, cradle bundles of snow. Like a blood moon, Bellower suddenly storms out of the darkness in gleaming red armor. There is your missing axe jutting from a bleeding bundle in his arms. The ground shakes from his roar. Poor sleep, Ivor, Alfred asks. She crouches over the fire, her strange shape fluttering in the firelight. The campsite is still, aside from the gentle crackle of firewood. I'm dreaming, right? Just dreams, yeah. Some people think dreams are omens. Those people are idiots, but they can certainly be a fine distraction from our troubles. Not my sort of distraction. I'm sorry if I dredged up old memories back from the godstone, so to speak. There's more to that story. Would you like me to tell you? Yeah. Yes, please. You've heard of one half already. How the Valka came forth during the Second Great War with fire and fury to push the sculptors to extinction. She gestures theoretically. So I've heard. Perception. Paint themselves the heroes. What the Valka really did was make their foes a promise. Abandon the war and they'd share secret knowledge. The Valka taught them to write. They taught the stone singers to weave. And for the first time, the sculptors learned how to make more sculptors to thrive. They kept their end of the bargain and remained hidden, at least until recently. How do you know this? They have their own history and carvings. I've read it on great black stones in their dark home, as their trusted guest. What I don't understand is why you trust these Valka. You stare into the fire, and it shows you old shapes. When you speak, it's almost as if to yourself. When I killed Rays, I returned to my kind with her head. Ingvar, they chanted. None had slain asunder before. They wanted to make me a king's kender. 
I couldn't. They haunted me, Bellower and Raze, and that damn child. Every night, like tonight. Maybe it sounds like nothing to have bad dreams, but it rubs you raw. It gets in your bones. So I left the Val. I found a small town of men, where nobody knew who I was. Nobody called me Ingvar. Ivar. Never had dreams like that in Skoga. And that's why you agreed to come with Juno and Ivind. The truth is, Juno didn't ask me to join them. I asked her. The flames continued to dance, hypnotically. On that bridge in Einar Topped, I stood before Bellower. I could have moved. But I just held up my shield and waited for the end. What's that, Ivor? The name snaps you out of your trance. You stand to stretch your legs. Your axe is where you left it, and the ravens are beginning to stir in their tents. It's nothing. So he was ready to die because he knew that he didn't deserve to be a hero or something like that. Like when the Bella was going to kill him, he was like, you know what, I deserve this because I killed Asunder and her child, and I feel like a bad person. Uh. First things first, I am the realist. Uh, we need three days of rest. And then we'll do what little ranking up we can with our rank eights. Um, let's go for... Um... <laughs> Yeah, avoid strength damage. Oh, wait. Oh, that's it. I fully leveled up. Okay, sweet. Uh, any other rank 8s that can rank up? Juno. Oh, so I presume that when she does confuse enemies, it does count as her kill. Um, exploit. Nah, dodge. Yeah, and no, she doesn't want to... Wait. What's the other one? I can't look at the other skill. Uh, sure. Whatever. Wait, what? There we go. Anyone else rank 8 that can rank up? No. Do we have enough points to rank up a rank 9? Yes. But do I want it to be Mogan, Eric, Ollie, or Juno? Or Valgard? Um, I do like Iric now because of the bear, but knowing it's only a one-time thing has soured it a little bit for me. Hmm. For me now, Iric is just a good version of Deitch. So what's the point in having Deitch around anymore? I'm going to go with Iric. I feel like I played it with this guy in the first game or the second game. Either way, I hated him. I thought he, I thought he was awful, and he's really, he's really come through. Let's go with. Defense against strength damage. Oh, we can talk to him now as well. Iric, the ranger you met in Strand, is awake. He's watching the distance from he's watching the distance from the edge to the light. Edge of the light. I can't read. Let's start again. Iric, the ranger you met at Strand is awake. He's watching the distance from the edge of the light, talking quietly with his friend, Valgard. Worried about the warped? We'd be crazy not to be. I'm Iric. This is the first time we spoke to him. Steward of Strand, or what's left of it. You've met Valgard. Ivor the Armless. He barks a laugh. His tired gaze drifts some, ever vigilant. You can tell he is listening. Um, so these two survived with Alfren, right? In the uh, in the Great Hall of Strand. How did you end up the only survivors? They don't call him the Iron Turtle for nothing. Last one standing before Alfren came. The rest of the town was killed by Dredge. We held the Great Wall. Great Hall. Then the governor went and died of a heart attack. Damn him. And then the warp choked up. It was a damn shame we lost so many good fighters, but I won't miss those tournaments. What do you mean? The tournaments in Strand were a brilliant plan to reduce street violence and turf wars. I take it from your enthusiastic tone that they didn't work. They started the fights back when I was a watchman, but I never noticed much of an impact. Something always went wrong with those things. Still, we did use them as for a ruse or two. 
some of the tournament fighters helped defend Strand, Strand in its death throes. Good men. And women, in fact. One of the best was called the Stoic Mother. You can tell he is listening. Uh, that'll do. Save it to Likewise. And Bercy. Bercy tosses in his sleep until he finally huffs and gives up. He sees you're also awake and comes to sit nearby. Trouble? I don't know these damn, how these damn ravens do it. I just can't pass out on a moment's notice. Are you not one of the ravens? I can see how you might get that impression. I joined Bulwark at Boa's Guard because the Valka asked me to. And when that went wrong, I got roped into this like everyone else. Bercy wears a frown and leans on his axe handle. So you work for yourself? Never could get into that our bones the hills stuff like the rest of you. Why would I care about the dredge or dying in battle? I'd rather have the means to do what I want. Live comfortably. Eat well. Turns out there's a lot of men out there thrilled to hire a vol for some blood work, so I thought I'd do that for a little while. Now it's a lifetime later, and I never got rich from it. Spent my whole life chasing work while others profited. One time I travelled with a prince. Ah, oh, yeah, this is, yeah, okay, so he's finally bringing it up. I travelled with a prince and his tax collector. Thought it was going to be my big payday. People just handed their money over, piled it right into a huge cart because we told them they had to. Practically robbery. Eventually the cart fell over a cliff and exploded into a shower of gold coins never to be seen again. I'd never shed a tear over killing a man, but that, I cried like a lost baby bird. It happened pretty damn close to this very spot. Now that I think about it, ah, oh, I can't leave this darkness though. It's probably all twisted up and dark as dog turds now anyway. Maybe there's, no, maybe there's a moral, uh, maybe there's a moral here, but I'm not digging for it. Bercy wears a frown. I'll sit quietly until the others wake up. You keep the rest of your thoughts to yourself. It would be an awkward silence if you weren't both vile. Looks like it's time to get going. You know, Ivor. You can tell he's debating whether or not to get something off his chest. When I worked for the Volker, one of the jobs they paid me to do was to find you. You'd gone into hiding, and they wanted to know where. Do I dare ask why? Truth is, I don't know why. I don't ask questions, but I never found you. I had a feeling if I had, things would have ended up differently between us. So I'm glad I never sniffed around any small towns, like Skoka, for example. Bercy leaves with a pat on the shoulder, and you realise you'd never mentioned Skoka to him. <gasps> oh! So he knew I was in Skoga. Wait, what? Ooh. Spooky. Alright, let's go. Time to confront Volvok. We're close. I can see the tower just over this ridge. That being Volvok's close too. Ah. Bulwark is waiting ahead, Juno says, and the caravan slows. He is patient, with dangerous allies. I believe he intends to stop us from entering Ridgehorn. I will leave Bulwark away, Juno says. Ivan looks blankly in, in, into the distance, as though he already knew what was coming, but Juno continues. The rest of the will wait for my return within Ridgehorn. How are you going to deal with him? He cannot be controlled, but he can be misled. He doesn't know where we're headed, and we will and will believe he is pursuing us past Ridgehorn. Says Juno, I will return one way or the other. Falka steps forward, I don't trust you, and even if I did, you can't handle Bulwark on your own. We'll split the caravan. She volunteers herself, Ollie, and Spa. They give each other dubious looks. Falka adds, I don't take orders, remember? I'll agree with Falka. Falka hasn't been wrong about Bulwark yet, you say, suddenly feeling Juno's gaze weigh heavily. Then lift. As you say, she replies. Repair quickly, she tells Falka. The rest of the caravan cautiously approaches Ridgehorn, Ivan carrying the light. Fresh footprints trails into the snow, following Juno's diversion. The way appears clear. The three guys that joined Juno, I'm not, you know, I'm not heartbroken about losing. I've been told this is where they found Juno the first time. Now they say it's the entrance to another world. How far had she already come just to fall here? Ridgehorn. This brings back some memories. I'm glad they finally, like, introduced Bercy into the story a bit more. It was weird how he just joined us and never explained that he left the prince. I 
Ivan curses when he sees the rubble around Ridgehorn's tower. The tremors caused by the serpent have caused many structures to topple it. Where is the serpent? And is he is he causing the darkness? I don't even know. Ivan exclaims, there should be a doorway leading to... Give me some time, he says, running off towards the base of the tower. You can see him waving his Valka staff, heaving enormous chunks of rock aside through sheer willpower. Little help, shouts Valgar, drawing your attention to the fort's, fort's courtyard. Bulwark is nowhere in sight, but his warped allies didn't miss you slipping over the bridge. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's get all of our rank 8s into the fight. And our rank 9s. Looks like this is our weakest team. First he's going to lead the charge, then Mogan, then Valgard. In fact, no, I think Dyke should go a little bit earlier. I've got no rangey guys, so maybe Mogan will go at the back because he's the only one with a rangey move. Actually, I think Valgard's got the axe throw move as well. Alright, let's go. We've got the, uh, the axe storm. Hmm. What is the best way to do this? Then we're going to attack the right side first. Let's go. Make it quick before something, 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 something. I couldn't read the rest. Um, now, we don't want to get close enough. We want to have the first hit, as always. I'm actually going to sneak around the side. And then go invisible. So I don't want to get in everyone else's way. I could attack, but we won't yet. Now I do know that after this Ride the Lightning move, she does go back to where she started. Not much else we can do. Thought I ended my turn there. So, I'd have to move four spaces forward to be able to land the axe throw. Which would put me in harm's way, so we'll, we won't do that. Oh, do I just... Do we push forward now? Let's do it. We actually, we needed that. We needed him to go around us. Okay. We're not done yet. I don't mind that at all. We're on a waste of willpower when we don't need to. Oh, Juno, hey. Oh! Oh, wow. So if I had sent Juno alone, only she would rejoin the fight. Or maybe she would have died, who knows. We'll take that, I think. Probably should have sent Ivor to join her though, because then he would have joined. Nice.
We're not done yet. Thanks, Valgod. Um, yeah, that'll do, I guess. We'll do the Axe Storm. Oh, I'll make it four. Oh, incredible. And it was crit. Now, I could do a normal attack against that guy. I might as well, right? We'll take that. We'll take that over a day of the week. Again, one damage is a bit crap. What we'll do instead is just... Wait, what? Shield Maiden and any adjacent allies take half damage. Oh, I, put, I, I chose the wrong move. Oh, okay, so the normal move just protects allies. And if I give it more willpower, then I gain armor, which we don't care about right now. Love that. I would really, really like to confuse the bear. So I, I think I can reach... Um, God, I actually don't know. Let's just get... Let's just get close. Let's just risk it all. Oh, so I could have got one space. Two spaces back and still reach, but that's okay. Let's go here. Axe Storm. Those bears are terrifying, by the way. 20 armor and 21 strength. Are you having a laugh? Probably smart if I go invisible. We'll do a big damage attack next turn. Yikes. This might work. Hail that one. Depending on where he chooses to go, he could kill himself. We're not done yet. Thanks for the reminder. I'm actually kind of worried here. Like, there's so many enemies here and they're all so strong. Let's put you in a bit of harm's way and we'll just give you a stone wall. <coughs> I'll do some lightning. You're telling me. Okay, no point doing lightning yet. Crits in there. I don't know what the plan is here to just survive because I don't think we can win this fight normally. Um, 
have to, have to confuse the bear. Guess we kill the axe. No, the axe guy's not going to hurt anyone now, really. damage God, even when I'm ignoring armor these guys are still too strong for me Oh my word. Okay, this is good. But you know, can't die, of course. Well, what do I do about him? Oh, damn you, absorbing. I don't know if it's one of those where every time we get a kill... ...something happens in the story. Let's have a look. No, nothing. Okay. If they just want us to win this fight organically, I, I fear that it's already hopeless. Should be enough to get back next turn. It's the bears. The bears are, are too much. No, 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 no. I do not mean to do that. That was what we call a mistake in the gaming industry. Oh my god. How are we supposed to win this fight? Even if I use my strongest team, there's so many of them. It's it's this guy, it's that stone thrower. He hurts you when you get too close. Somehow Falcus still at like full health, which is actually kind of nice. Oh, oh my god, the defy, it actually worked. Get confused, you stupid bear. I would have done so much damage if it was strength. Let's 
take anything. Love it. Okay, you know what? I fear back you're you're doomed. Target heals for half of Ulfric's current will. Oh! That's a huge move. I don't know that heal people. Unfortunately, her willpower is too low, so it doesn't really help us, but. I mean, we might as well use this lightning. We have to use it at some point. This is such a close fight. I really don't know if we're going to win. I've got so many people that are, I've got one HP. about to use her I was just about to confuse the bear and maybe even kill the other bear hold on mate if I go bap bap oh my god and I get a turn incredible please tell me confuse this one God, I have no idea. I have no idea if we're going to win this. No, oh God. It's so sad. Oh, Alfred just dies. <laughs> just dies for no reason. Oh my god, absorbed like an arrow. God, who do I attack here? It's a 2v2! Okay, okay. I can still I can still confuse this guy. Oh, it's a 2v1. Okay, she's dead, but she's not really dead. 1v1. Seven and eleven against seven and twelve. What has Weave Energy do? Gives people willpower. Confusing someone's not going to help me. So we have to attack. Yeah, we'll do this. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, she just died because she's taking damage every turn. If I go, wait, if I go bat, bat. Finish this! 
Good lord. Good lord. Valgard, the one character in my team who I was talking smack on, who I said sucks and I don't like him, is the one last standing dude, along with Judo, who of course died like five times in that fight. Holy moly. If this is what Bulbuck can bring to bear, you can only imagine how much worse it would have been if he were here. Juno weaves between bodies of the fallen dredge and catches your eye before she heads up the steps of Ridgehorn Tower. In your head you hear her thin voice when you are ready. Join me. She must have given Bulbuck the real runaround, says Spa. He keeps glancing at the bridge as if expecting to summon the berserker by name alone. Think I better make sure Ivan's almost done. How about I whistle when it's time to go? Alfred offers to ferry you anywhere you need to go. Shortcut for now. Oh, nice. So we got the tower and we got heroes, but we can't rest. Guess we can do some uh, some ranking up. Any rank eights ready to join the elite squad? Any more? Ivan, but he has not got enough kills. Same with Spa. So let's rank up a rank no oh Mogan. No, sorry, no, Mogan's rank nine. Uh let's rank up a rank nine. Could be Mogan. Could also be Valgard. Juno. You know what, Valgard? I think you've just earned it with that fight. Let's go. And let's give you Titan straps. A 1 in 4 chance of recovering one armor every turn. Which actually sounds pretty awful when you say it out loud, but that's okay. Speak to Spa. Spa sits on the rubble of a ruin, watching Ivind more move vast slabs. He fidgets with an ornate mead horn. Got a time as any to give you this, Val. I notice you got no drinking horn, and that's no way to live. I don't care to drink from a yox horn, old man. Nay, nay. Does this look like a sodding yox horn? It's carved from the tusk of a gold boar. It shines, even in full black. Okay, so I've never seen a real gold boar, but I did steal it a long time ago from a very rich man, and he seemed pretty convinced. Volker stabbed me with her eyes when I told her I was giving it to you. What made you think of this now? Oh, I don't know. Been down a lot of roads. Got a feeling I might not see the end of this one. And I don't want to imagine Daichi using it for some disgusting thing after I'm dead. Why well, give it to me? Tradition, Val. These young folk don't know respect. They don't know. They don't remember a time when it was right to honor a guest. I don't care what any of them say. You're doing a fine job. Look here. That's history carved right there. Before banners and tapestries. See the little armies? The tusk does seem to have a shimmer on its own. Carved figures almost look like they move as you roll it in your hands. I can't keep this. Take it. Take it. It's not getting me laid anymore. <laughs> not like this lang spill, anyway. He smiles, pleased with himself. You don't seem too upset about facing death. Upset about dying? Val, I'm more upset about living. Do you know what it's like taking a piss three times a night but only waking up twice? <laughs> no, death sounds fine. It sounds fine. But I'll tell you what, I'll miss my life. The secret for us poor bastards with short lifespans. It's love. Sounds like a bunch of rot, I know. But if you don't love life, it'll make you miserable. Learn that from a lady friend. He smiles. I better go check on Uno. Ah, you better. If these two don't find the passage soon, Paul Burke will feign us right out of our puckered asses. Yeah. Thanks for the horn. I'll make sure nobody does anything disgusting with it. And enjoy it, too. It's not a bloody decoration. It's a gift from the god Blessed Ravens. Ah. Oh, it's also an item. Wait, can I use it? Can I use it now? Can I, can I use it now? Oh, rank 30. Minus one move, 80% maximum chance to hit. One strength damage resist, plus three. Plus three strength, plus three break. That's actually flipping huge. Alas. No one's strong enough to use it. Uh, let's go up the tower.
I thought you'd be helping Ivan. I had to check on something. Look on the horizon. The serpent writhes in the distance. It knows we're here, but won't approach, hopefully. Is it scared of you? Scared? I don't think it understands such things. For now, it's just trying to discover what we will do next. I know the feeling. These horn towers are portals the Menders built long ago. They allow us to enter the inner earth, the dredge home. I knew the dredge came from below, but inner earth, like caverns? No, not at all. Imagine another world with sun and sky like our own, but within our own. This will be a dangerous path, but the quickest route to the place where Ivan will do all of this. Juno sees the scepticism on your face without looking. I also came here to speak with you privately. I know Ivan may seem unusual, or unapproachable, but he's a good person. Um, you seem an unlikely pair. I can see why you think that. The fact is, I saved him and he saved me. He is kind and devoted. There is a smile on her face and you realise that it may be the first you've seen. I don't know how to talk about it without sounding like an infatuated girl. I truly love him. I know it won't excuse things to say the Volker lead... I know it won't excuse things to say the Volker lead different lives hard in their own way. But we don't all des but don't we all deserve to be loved by those who would do anything for us? We do. That means a lot to me, and Ivan too. When you asked to come with us, I was uncertain. I didn't want to take you away from loved ones. But I'm glad to have you here. I consider you a friend. One of the few Ivan and I have left. I will do what needs to be done to fix all this, no matter the cost. And I've decided that no matter what happens, I will not influence you again. I promise you that. Trust is important. A whistle reaches you on the wind. You leave the churning coils of the serpent on the horizon and return to where the others had already entered the tower. Oh, Bulwark's there. Oh, I see him. He's going to push us all into this hole. You join the others already waiting in an, or in an enormous chamber beneath the tower. So what do you expect to, what do you expect to happen next, sparse sputters? Ivan steps to the edge. We jump. Heavy footsteps echo up high walls with a dreadful outline stands in the doorway. Well done, witch, says Bulwark. Made a fool of me again. Even from here you can tell he's shaking with rage. Ivan screams for everyone to jump, but there is only hesitation. Volker turns and walks to Bulwark. Oh, she's going to die. She's going to die right here. He's, he's being controlled by someone else. He's going to die. The caravan watches Volker with rapt anticipation. I doubt we'll get another chance to talk, Bulwark, so I had to know. Is there anything left of you in there? I never left Volker. You left. We thought it was what you wanted. I thought I was following orders. What's done is done. Yeah, that does sound like you. You get as close as you dare, the two barely acknowledging your presence. He'll kill you, Falker. Better listen to him. I'm almost as unpredictable as the company you keep. What if we Volker can undo this, Bulwark? What if they really can? It doesn't have to end like this, you stubborn dolt. They lied to you, Falker. They're lying still. Bulwark points his axe at the Volker, and static flickers across Ivan's shaking hands. Those two took our reputations. They took our freedom. They took my life. They did all of this. Even if they can save this world, I won't allow it. Are you kidding me? Life's not fair. Is that your argument? Even when I was eight years old, I never gave you such a sniveling, sniveling dribble. Don't destroy everything we made to save your pride. The ravens need you, and so do I. You feel the slightest shift in Volvok's demeanor, but in a blink it's gone. Jump down the rabbit hole, Falker. I won't stop coming until every one of you is dead. That's all you've got for me? Me? Volker snatches Bulwark's axe from her belt, the one you threw near Strand, and pushes it into his hand. If this is just revenge, why wait? Oh, I'm going to trust her to intuition. Oh no. I've always liked you, Volker. That's why I gave you the chance to run. She's dead, right? Things are suddenly moving too quickly to react. Without- oh god. Without hesitation, Bulwark buries his axe blade deep into Falker's neck and she falls in a bloody heap. Your face narrowly escapes Bulwark's second axe blade as you stumble backwards. His screaming rage fills the room in the, in, until a peal of thunder drowns it out. Lightning arcs from Ivan's staff, scorching the ground around you in wild patterns, catching Bulwark's fur cloak on fire. Ravens reluctantly leap into the pit and you follow, tumbling down into the darkness as the light from the hole above recedes. 
A roar rings in your ears, like the bellow of a thunder. Bulberg leans over the edge, his face wreathed in flames from the smouldering cloak. It's the last thing you see before everything goes black. 